So, they look like this. They're similar to watercolors in that you need a brush and water. And what you're going to do is you're going to use a wet brush and go into it. So I'm going to do warm colors for my dog. So I'm going to use my water and my brush and I'm going to get my warm color. And I'm going to start with just basic red. And then I can make any other warm colors that I want to. I also have yellow available that's a warm color. If I want to have oranges, I'm going to have to mix. And then I'm just going to start painting um, my dog wherever I decide I want to. Trying to stay within the lines. And I would highly suggest that you don't just paint it one color, but kind of play with your colors. Like here, I might fade into an orange, so I'm gonna take my paintbrush with my red, grab a little bit of water, and I'm just gonna go onto my yellow, and yes, you are gonna need to clean these when you're done. You'll use a wet paper towel, and you just wipe the top of each one. Probably a clean paper towel per, per color. And you'll see that my yellow is starting to turn into an orange, so I'm gonna fade into an orange here to make it a little more interesting. And probably gonna go back, zoom in so you can see that effect we got there. I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna go back to my straight red and I'm gonna kind of do a similar thing around most of his head probably, so where I'm kind of outlining some areas. The more times you go around um, the tempura paints, the darker your color is gonna be, the less times obviously the lighter. I want to create like a effect here. Anywhere you paint over the lines by accident, um, you'll want to go back and clean up at the end by going back over it in Sharpie once it's all dry. Get a little more red. Kind of just framing it in and then I'm going in with the orange. Maybe I'll dab into some yellow too. And this is a shadow, so I'm gonna actually go in and mix a black with my red and try to get that effect. And I'm going to grab some more orange. My orange is getting a little lighter because I'm just going into that already mixed red and yellow and every time I do it mixes a little more with the yellow which lightens it up so if you want it to stay darker you have to add a little bit more red. And I'm going to get it to be, I'm going to get some yellow on there. Not all the way yellow because I've got that orange stuck in there but a little more yellow so that I can get a little bit different color happening in the face. And I'm gonna go around his eye with that yellow color too. Again, I'm painting right over the Sharpie right there, so I'm gonna have to go back in later and fix that. And now this area over here by his ear, make sure you get all the white spots and he's solidly colored. This area by his ear is the red, 
um, or the shadow. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of black and then I'm gonna go over to my red and mix it. And that makes a little bit brighter of a red. I think I want a little more black in that. To show that it's a shadow, but I don't wanna to be totally black. And my shadow reaches up into here, so I'm gonna pull it up there. I can always mix more red in if I'm, if I'm not liking the color. So I've pretty much got my head filled in and I'm sticking to warm colors. I think I might actually make his eye a cool color so it pops. So I'm gonna do like a blue maybe. And just be careful about be going next to other wet paint, especially a warm and cool next to each other that they don't bleed. Take your time. Okay, so there's his blue eye. And I think I'm just gonna do his nose a black. Remember, black is a shade. It doesn't really count in your color scheme. So you can use that black and white with any color scheme that you want, and it doesn't count against you. I'm trying to leave a little reflection. So there's his head, and I'm just gonna keep moving forward and working on his body in warm colors. And then I might do maybe his harness in like a cool color so it stands out. Remember, you can choose any color scheme that you want. Also, remember to layer colors, mix colors, get creative with them. Don't just do something a solid color. It's going to be very boring and not very interesting. You need to really play with the way you're gonna paint things. Like I did a lot of outlining with the red and then I faded into an orangish yellow. Um, I could have done a little better job with fading here because it kind of was a harsh line. So you can always go back and edit things too. If things dry and you don't like the way they look, you can always go back and repaint some things too. I'm working on the background and I'm doing a cool color um, scheme in the background to make my warm color scheme pop. And a couple of things that when you are painting you should take into consideration. Um, you should, when you're trying to paint a large area like this, sometimes we tend to run right into our subject. So I, can, I would suggest cutting in. That means outlining carefully with your paint around the outside of the area that you're going to be painting. So something like this. And then it makes it much easier to go in and paint inside without touching or going into your subject because you're just painting to the border that you already painted. Another thing is when you're painting, I should not see you scrubbing back and forth. This is what I sometimes see. Now, you need to lift your paintbrush after each time because if you scrub your paintbrush, you're probably going to end up with a hole in your paper. And once there's a hole in your paper, there's really uh, nothing we can do about that. So remember to cut in Prior to painting an area, go around the subject. I 
and then paint up to it and lifting your brush. And you can also see I'm doing a lot of different um, t shades of blues and purples back here. You could go with a straight color if you want or you can mix it up. I'm just kind of playing with it. I want to make it a little more interesting than just a straight color. Um, but it's really up to you <clears throat> what you want it to look like. And again, here I am cutting in around my subject. Try not to go into your subject or then you have to go back and work to fix that. And then I can paint the big area without worrying so much. Once I'm all done with painting, um, I do need to wait for it to dry and then I need to go back in with my Sharpie marker and I need to put in my lines again because a lot of them got painted over and it will brighten them back up and bring them back out. You can see the difference already. So please make sure that you go back in and outline once everything is dry. Don't do it while it's wet or you will end up with a hole. And even though the nose is black, I'm still re-outlining the nose as well. 